reason or the other, and they either decide to bail out out of a particular condition or, in this case, perhaps show some confidence. So they, these, these are shocks that happen. It can be a positive shock. It could be a good shock. It's good that it is reclaiming some of the lost ground. But the CD, as I said to you earlier, is actually fundamentally a weak currency compared to others. So even without these shocks, we still have a situation where the CD has been steadily declining, even as it was undergoing redenomination, it was losing its value and has consistently lost the value. One of the graphs I sent you, mm -hmm. uh, we compared the, the CD to the Naira of Nigeria. Let me just make an announcement and apologize to our viewers on Facebook that it looks like we're having difficulty uh, getting you the, the right uh, pictures on Facebook and uh, people are sending in messages about that. And uh, please, our Facebook people, can you have a look at this urgently? Uh, as people are complaining that the visuals on Facebook are very, very bad. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> so okay. Uh, my question then is, how did the CD appreciate? It, it, we will have to obviously look mm. into it. Sentiments sometimes play a part. Uh, I mean, should, we, should we be attributing it to government doing something? That's what I'm saying. And that they, could they have done something in that short period? No. The fact that they, they are out there raising money to help, because when they raised the, the euro bond, the $3 billion, they said they were going to use part of that to show up the reserves. Mm -hmm. So that alone could boost uh, uh, public confidence in that. The key question is how sustainable is it? Because we, all, we tend to do that a lot, where we go off track, we borrow money to uh, show up confidence. But because it's not a sustainable solution, once the money runs out, and we can't keep borrowing $3 billion every two weeks or every month or whatever. Yeah. So then the underlying decline then begins. So we are expecting, oh, in, in terms of a, a policy analysis, mm -hmm. you are expecting the city to get back to a declining level? Uh, it, will, it will, unless we put in place the necessary measures. Don't forget that... Do we have the, necessary short-term measures that can take it stable to, say, the end of the year, five months, six months? The most credible one, and I keep saying that, is simply for government to cut back spending. Uh, but that government doesn't spend dollars, it spends CDs. It, send, it spends CDs, yes. It mm -hmm. pumps about 2 billion CDs into the economy every month in the form of uh, um, salaries, salaries and yeah. goods and services. Mm -hmm. Now, what do we spend all that money on? We hardly produce anything. So everything then is used towards imports, which then puts pressure. So all those CDs city. are going to chase dollars? They are going to chase dollars. And we don't have enough dollars coming in. One, because we are not exporting as much as we should. Explain to me. So if a household is, has earned part of that $2 billion, they have earned 5,000 CDs. How mm. is that 5,000 CDs going to chase dollars? They, is it because the things they are going to buy not, are imported? Not directly in, uh -huh. in terms of chasing dollars, but virtually everything we buy is imported. So, so that, that household then, is going to buy a basket of goods. Yes. And you are saying that majority of what they are going to buy is imported. Exactly. Therefore, how are they chasing dollars? It puts implicitly they are, but they, it puts to the degree that what they are buying is imported. Mm -hmm. We need to use those dollars to pay for that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so it puts pressure, and it's a fundamental structural problem that has been with us, not just with this government or the previous government, but dating back to Nkrumah's time. Oh, but Nkrumah's time, we're not importing a lot. Oh, yes, we were. We, yes, because we're we, not importing that much. Well, yes, we were both for consumption, because don't forget, again, it goes back to the nature of the colonial economy, where they deliberately introduced us to certain tastes that made us dependent on imports. Mm -hmm. So, Milo, overall tin, sugar, butter, and all these things that we're not producing, but we had to import. And we could only do that by virtue of exporting cocoa and cocoa only. And even now, we depend almost entirely on cocoa only. We hardly get anything from oil, we hardly get anything from gold or any of the other products. So our entire existence, our entire appetite for imports, it's more or less cocoa. And that comes in once a year through the cocoa syndicated loan. And after that, you have nothing else to work on. And even that has come down. A few years ago, we had cocoa syndicated loan of about $2 billion U.S. dollars. Ideally, it should be going up. The last one was about $1.3 or so billion. So there are these structural contradictions that make the city inherently weak. And I wish you could put up the, the graph I was telling you about. Okay, let, let's look, uh, uh, put up some of the graphs. Um, the, uh, let's put up the graphs and let Dr. Nimoy Thompson decide which one, okay. which one he, he wants. If you can do that very quickly, please. Okay. No uh, problem. Because we will, yeah, so is it this one you're looking for? This, this is uh, one of them. Okay, you this, really like to talk about this one? Oh, now? sure. This is wage. Okay. So, so what's this? Fact, this, 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 this? This is one that, that goes all the way back 
to Nkrumah's time. Occasionally, mm -hmm. we have reliefs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But the green bars you see up there uh -huh. are uh, wage expenditures that exceed what is in the budget. So we almost consistently always exceed our wage. No, no, I don't understand it. So the, the green, green bars, bar, they show that you don't see the, the amounts there, but there mm -hmm. are amounts on top. Okay. So, so this one starts from 2008. Mm -hmm. And it builds up. So, so the green bar represents the amount of money that exceeds the budget. But not, not the amount of money, the wage bill. So oh, let's just, say the, just the wage bill. Just the wage bill. Because mm -hmm. don't forget, government is driving consumption. But when government is budgeting, doing the budget, don't they know what the wage bill will be? That is, that is, that is a very good question. They should. In fact, the wage bill should be the last thing that you exceed. Because at the beginning of the year, you should know the number of people multiplied by the, how much you're supposed to pay them, and it's all over. Is it because of agitations of trade unions, so they have to make adjustments? You need to know that from the beginning. It don't for, this is consistent. Okay, and if okay. you look at that, it, it actually, uh, it's not too clear from you. I don't know what mm -hmm. the viewers have seen. But what happens is that it spikes every election year. Mm -hmm. So you see over there... The, well, the, the wage bill going up. Yeah, uh, the far extreme, the, the one on the left, yeah. is 2008. Yeah. And then at 2009, it went down. I've seen that. It went yeah, down. Yeah, then 2010, it went down. Down, down. And then, exactly. Down. And then 2011, the, it builds up. Yes. And then 2012, oh, it shut up. What's the, what's the uh, orange uh, block? Which are, That's the, not the, orange. No, you have green and orange. Uh, next to that. Well, now, red. in it's those red, two okay. years, we actually exceeded our revenue. Mm -hmm. So that's 11 years. And of those 11 years, we exceeded our revenue only three times. This is wage, re wage bill revenue. The wage bill in green and mm -hmm. then the, the revenue in the, red. Okay, okay, okay. I see what you mean. All right. Okay, now I get it. So wage bill is in green. Yes. Revenue that we collect. Exactly. It's in, uh, in the red. Yes. And each okay, one... So it looks like 2011, it wasn't bad, is it? Uh, yeah, 2011... We exceeded our... So where you find the red uh, bars pointing downwards... Exactly. That means we collected less than we anticipated. And yet we spent more on wages than we had planned for. Oh, that's a devastating... When you do that, and you can't do that as a business. No, you can't. When you your collapse. revenue is declining and you are raising the salaries of your employees. But why does revenue decline? Why, do, why are we not able to meet people don't pay taxes? It's not that people don't pay taxes. When the government is spending like that, it is actually undermining growth. There's another graph that shows a decline. When the government is spending on wage bills. Yes, yes, because it's simply promoting consumption as opposed to promoting production. The people that the government spends on the, the wage bill on them, don't yes. they produce? That's, they, we have one of the most inefficient public sectors in the world that you can imagine. Oh, a in lot the whole of the, wide world. Yes, I mean, well, I have a World Bank thing that I will show you later on. That one relates to, to uh, Africa. They compared Ghana to eight other African countries. And we have the lowest... Uh, Average public sector wage as a share of GDP, we are the lowest of the African, because there are simply too many people on our uh, wage bill. And we saw what happened with the so, Iowa so West mm -hmm. Wogon hearings, that certain people do actually get on the payroll without necessarily having to be there. Because there's a disparity there, where the wage bill is weighed down by so many people, and that creates ma massive inefficiencies. So at the end of the but month... But we also do complain that public sector wages are low. That's because there are too many people on the wage bill. Really? Like, of course. As but as we also do know that we don't have enough doctors in Kolibu. Exactly. Now, if we... And the doctors that we have there, their pace is low. Yeah. If we, what we need to do is to rationalize, more or less purge the wage bill. Is that not what single spine was intended to it do? It was supposed to be, but virtually every solution to our problem, somehow along the line, it's subverted. Either by subterf subterfuge, either by corruption. Look at what's happening with NAPCO where people are doing multiple registrations and so forth and so on. So, but the, the fundamental... So are we, a, are we a bad people? We have weak institutions. I suppose there are bad people everywhere. Yeah. But there are strong institutions, strong responsive institutions, and our institutions are weak. Ideally, ideally, we should have uh, a public civil service or public service yeah. test for everyone, a basic test for everyone before you even move into the services. That's not the case. Just about anybody in Ghana can get on the government's payroll. I know of someone who was retiring and they put, I'd heard of it, I don't know the person, but I heard of it, that they were retiring, they put their house help on, on, on government payroll because they couldn't afford to pay them uh, anymore. Uh, but if I'm, you are retired, how do you put your house up on the payroll? That, that's the thing. because they, 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 they How are you able to do that? Because you yourself, you're out of the payroll. Exactly. But they, they use their influences to do that. When I got into government, I had to go to Minister of Finance to do uh, biometric registration. I was horrified by what I saw. I mean, it was like open season for people just getting on the payroll. They had letters sitting on the table. 
signed by some district education officer. I said, so how do you even know that this district education officer exists? So well, we don't know. They simply sent. Later on, I found out that they were shipping, they were busing people in to Accra to come and get on the public payroll. So my own guess is that maybe between 20, 30 percent of the people on there shouldn't be there at all. Then you have those. Well, we have heard many times. So, for instance, when Honorable Yao Safamafu was finance minister, yes. he was celebrated for cancelling what they call ghost names yes. of, of the payroll. Yes. We've heard that exercise oh. being successful yes. over and over again. Do the, do the ghosts find their way back? Uh, pr pretty much. But I wish I had the time I would take you back to budgets of old, 1980s, 1970s. Mm -hmm. Ghost names that supposedly were removed, but somehow always found. Again, the problem is weak institutions. Now, Weak institutions plus a government that's simply not spending in the right way. If you have seen the other graph, you'd have seen a decline in, in the uh, infrastructure budget, for example. Let's put another graph on. Uh, there, are, there are a few graphs. Let's put another that one on. That shows the, the, the yeah. decline. So there's that kind of, I call it the scissors Is that just problem. what you're talking about? Yeah, this, that's it right there. Okay. Now, the blue line you see mm -hmm. is the budget for infrastructure. Blue. Yeah, the blue well, line. Going, going up all the way. Okay, so that's what they put down in the budget that we're going to spend this money for infrastructure. Okay. But the next line, which it looks orange from here, mm -hmm. is what actually is then released. So if you so look over the years. Yeah, over the years. This one starts, I think, from 2009, thereabouts. Okay, but there's a period where the orange is higher than the blue. Exactly. Which but let, let me just explain. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see that one here. I can, okay. I'll, I'll no, just where the orange is higher than the blue, you can the, see it. The, yeah. Was you that's know, 2013? Ah, you want to right, okay. Yeah, so that one was 2013, and then this 20, 2013 is John Muhammad's period. 2016. Oh, yes, yes. So, now, in that period, the, the infrastru actual infrastructure exceeded the projections for, for that year, 2013, mm -hmm. and also 2016. Now, 16 tw is also John Muhammad. 20 is it also, uh, but it's it, it, it goes. This, this is from 2009. Okay, and I use that because that's the period with the most consistent data. But if you read the budget statements for previous years, mm -hmm. it's the same problem of we promise to spend this on infrastructure, and for the most part it falls down. But the most critical line there is the black one at the bottom, mm -hmm. which is the same orange or red line adjusted for inflation, which means that, for instance, even though in 20, 2018 mm -hmm. we promised, I think, three point whatever over there, we ended up doing much lower. But if you adjust for inflation, the figure in 2018 was actually buying less. In other words, oh, okay. it could give us less roads or mm -hmm. less mileage or whatever than it did in 2009. So inflation alone has eaten into that. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, so while your expenditure for infrastructure, which you need for growth, and therefore your revenue growth also is declining in both nominal and real terms, your wage bill is increasing. So it becomes a scissor problem. Mm -hmm. where the wage bill is going up, but then the infrastructure one is coming down. And My concern is that the people that you're giving the wage bill to, mm -hmm. why are they not productive? Is it that we're not giving them the tools to make them productive? It's a combination of both. There, there are people who simply don't have the skills. There are some with the skills, but without the necessary resources to work with. That comes on the goods and services. Mm -hmm. I personally did research years ago in one of the agricultural districts where uh, we, we talked to extension officers, mm -hmm. and they were willing to work. But the, they didn't have the resources. They didn't have the motorcycles to go into the field. And where there was motorcycle, they didn't have the uh, petrol to fuel them and all that. But these people were getting paid every month. So that's, that's part of the problem. And the other part of the problem, of course, is that there are people who simply get on there. Listen, recently, was it yes? Okay, that's yesterday or the day before I read that 5,000 people have been taken off NAPCO and being put on the government payroll which is the last thing you want to do when you're having a crisis like this. In other countries, they actually freeze employment, freeze wages. But in Ghana, we do the opposite thing. I don't know how true it is. But well, I read we've that frozen employment under the IMF program for the last three years. It, it was net, yeah, and then the, the, but you see, not just employment, you need to also freeze wage growth and all that. And but, but here, the wages are, are set to be so bad mm -hmm. that if you freeze the wage growth, this is But you need to make people understand that we, we need to at some point break that cycle. And that's what the 40-year the plan actually proposed. That at some point, we need to break that cycle because if you but keep doing But it's a cycle that, that's tied to political fortunes. Exactly. So how are you going to break it? The, uh, one of the things I talked about about two, three weeks ago is that we should also organize a national economic forum. We've done that before. We've done that, but the major opposition party did not take 
part in it. Mm -hmm. it. It's something that needs to bring us together. And I gave the example of Germany, for example. Why Germany was able to rise from the ashes of the Second World War to become the dominant economy that it is in Europe today. Mm -hmm. They have what they call the Grand Coalition, where the two major parties at any moment were the dominant ones, but with also smaller parties participating in national development. So every idea, every view, every effort counted in national development. We have adopted a... Well, how did they do the national development vis-a-vis -vis the politicking of the ruling party and the opposition? Th that's party? what the Grand Coalition was. So in the Grand Coalition, you don't talk politics? No, you do talk politics, but it's not as exclusionary as... Ours is, as we call it, winner takes all. So this party wins, all other ideas don't count until it's your turn and then come and fix the problem. In Germany, it wasn't like that. This party may win, but the other, they, they need to have a majority. Well, but that's because of the system. That exactly. I mean, so you're, you're agreeing exactly. with, with some of us that we need a parliamentary system of government. We need, Mr. Mr. We need Before, to change we need to the do presidential that. system. Our system as it is. I mean, I've been talking about that for a while. It, it, our system is anti-development. It won't help us. It won't help us, but in the interim, in the interim, between I now and when forum, we change. Exactly. I we should change now. <laughs> as, as soon as possible. Yeah, we should have a major constitutional major. amendment. Major. But we did the CRC, the Constitution Review Commission report. Again, it's been thrown away just as well, a long time. It's, it's been worked done. It's been worked done. But, well, but it didn't address the issue of fundamentally change the system of government, move away from the presidential system, and go to a parliamentary system where you have more accountability. Not just and that. that way you can have the coalition you're talking about. Yes, yes. You can have, even if you have a, you're a party of five seats in parliament, yes. you are very, very useful. Exactly. You, because and your then views are important. Your views are important. So we can form smaller parties, the Green Party, the Blue Party, every, the, every the Students' in. Party, the that party. All you need is a seat in parliament yes. and you're in. And then your views, come, but as it is now, it's like, no, your views don't count. But meanwhile, the party of the day may be making certain mistakes that the other party actually has some experience about that could share with. But then it has become like, okay, you're not here, so you're not You see what's happened it. in Britain. The prime minister has given up on the Brexit deal yes. and handed over to parliament. Yes, yes. And so every party then comes in and says, this is what we want That's to do. That's what we need. But in the absence of that, we need to have a forum kind of thing, where you, the, which also then creates a basis for some sort of legitimacy. Because there are certain policies that the government of the day needs to pursue that may be unpopular, such as, such as freezing wages mm -hmm. or freezing employment. Don't forget that all, with all the political parties go around, vote for me and I'll give you employment, mm -hmm. which literally means vote for me and I'll put you on the government payroll. Meanwhile, the government payroll is stressed. Instead of creating employment in the private sector for these people, everyone is putting them on there. So it's a, it's a necessary but very delicate situation. But if we all come together and agree that, listen, we cannot go on any longer like this. At some point, we just have to break the cycle, create employment outside of the government, and then create the space. Then people will understand. But as long as it's like you are my enemy, rather than being partners in development, we're going to have the cycle. And as I told you, it goes way back. You should read some of the budgets from Nkrumah's time. Mm -hmm. You remember the, the IMF first came to Ghana in 1965 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when we were having similar, the same yeah. problems we're having now. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Before the coup. Yes, before the coup. And then in 1952. Kwesi Akwata was the finance minister. Exactly. Right. Berema had run away, by the way. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> run away. Apologies to the, to the CPP, to Kwesi Pratt. Yeah. Apologies to Kwesi Pratt. Then, Berema had run away. And then we had also uh, the, done that. It, 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 it bothers me because... Mm -hmm. What the long-term national, uh, the 40-year the plan did was to track all these things and say, listen, we don't have to do this anymore. And it didn't blame any particular party. It's MPP or NDC. But did your 40-year plan uh, recommend a change of governance system? On, on the goal four, institutional reforms, that's where we could do these things in terms of that. But goal one, let me just give you goal one, for example, which says build an industrialized, inclusive, and resilient economy. But people have said about the plan that it is too long for a political party whose full cycle is eight years, as we have it. Mm -hmm. I think Yosafa Mafo was one of those who said that, that mm -hmm. you need a 10-year plan, something that they can deal with, but 40-year plan. <laughs> and you have had an, a response that I've had, which, mm -hmm. which also makes sense, that 40 years doesn't mean you're going to run through all the 40 Actually, years. the first year yeah, was you, 2018, and it's yeah. gone. So we are now down to 39 years. Oh, I see. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not... The distant thing that the first year is gone. We haven't done anything. You had recommendations for year one of the 40 That's years. That's true. The 40-year plan was supposed to start from 2018 to 2057. 
Mm -hmm. And 2018 is gone. And Whereas by 57, we should be able to host the Olympic Games. Not just long before that, but by 57, we should be a high-income country yeah. with all the, 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 the manifestations of being a high-income so social development and so forth and so on. But bear in mind that, the, you see, because we are so naive, we tend to ignore what is going on around the world. Mm -hmm. Would you, you know that most, in fact, most Americans may not even know that their government has a 100-year job creation framework, 1950 to 20, 2050. That's the U.S. Yeah. But it's been broken down into 10-year, uh, what they call Occupational Outlook Handbook, which they then use. That's one reason why the U.S. has the lowest unemployment rate. Among. So long-term vision is good. In any case, those who were complaining about the 40-year plan yeah. are now out there looking for 30-year bonds. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it? You, you, you have well, a problem. I mean, finance minister has been talking about a centuries bond. Yeah, century bond, 100 yeah. years and all that. Yeah. And what's the basis? At least for the 40-year uh, plan, we had a projection of economic growth. What is the economic basis for a 30-year bond? You need to have a sense of trajectory of economic growth. So that, for instance, is not available. And the idea that you don't need a long-term plan, frankly, I think uh, uh, it's worrisome. It's one of the reasons why we are having the kinds of crisis we are having. And we're going to have that. Bear in mind that the, the city, since redenomination, has lost 80% of its value. 80% in just 12 years, 80% just wiped out because we have been doing all the wrong things. Government just keeps spending on wage bill, wage bill, wage bill. We don't invest in growth. If you don't invest in infrastructure, you will not grow. And your revenue will not grow. When you talk about infrastructure, what do you mean? Because for, for us ordinary people, when you say infrastructure, we know road. What else? Do, what does infrastructure uh, well, really connote? It's usually infrastructure. We have soft, uh, the soft infrastructure and the hard roads, uh, hard, hard infrastructure. So certainly roads, we don't really have much of it. Uh, I'm sure you've flown into Accra and you look out there and everything out there is red as opposed to being black in terms of the streets and whatnot. So that's a rail system. We, we had proposed uh, light rail for Accra, Kumasi, uh, Tamale, and Sekendi, Takrade. The good thing about the, by the way, in addition to the 40-year plan, there is also a 30-year infrastructure plan. Mm -hmm. And then right beneath that is a 20-year spatial development framework. Spatial. Spatial. The space so that, the exactly. The fiscal planning. So that we plan well. You don't just build anyhow. And oh, but we've bastardized that. I mean, how are you, how are you going to reverse it, that? It was supposed to help reverse that. Oh, yes. You should read We've that. already bastardized the spatial thing. Fortunately, fortunately, there's still, if you take out Greater Accra and Ashanti region, the majority mm -hmm. of Ghanaians still live in rural areas. So mm -hmm. there is still room for urbanization. And even for urban areas, there is still the, the, the framework does make recommendation for how to rejuvenate certain areas. That's why I think we don't even need a ministry for inner cities and zongo development because this is already taken care of in the framework. The problems of inner cities, the problems of zongos are already part, an integral part of the cities in which they are. So you cannot solve them in isolation. Mm -hmm. We also have slums. In addition to Zongo, don't forget, you go to a place at Kokompe, for, there's a place behind there, you'd be horrified that fellow human beings, Ghanaians, live in situations like this. And then you have the peri-urban communities coming up. You know. So these are all part of it, as, because if you don't plan your fiscal space well, it affects productivity. Have our politicians done a bad job over the last 30 years? More than that. They've done more than a bad yes, job, yes, yes, or more, more than, than 30 that. years. More, in, in terms of doing the right thing, the last time, the last before the Spatial Development Framework came up, the last plan that meant to actually plan our environment so that you don't have to go north in order to get to east. And you know sometimes yeah, you're yeah, driving... Yeah, I've, he I've heard that. I've exactly. Heard that. You're that driving there's, there's no connection from... The vertical connection is exactly. not, Everything is horizontal. Exactly. So there's so many things. You know, people talk about the seven-year development plan, mm. but there's a companion document called the National Fiscal Development Plan. That laid out how we're supposed to have Ghana, in fact, it was based on the British system. Yeah, and that's what the British do. Exactly. So that in, in, you can move from Accra, southern Accra, mm -hmm. which is the, the coastal area, Labadi, Teshi, and Accra, mm -hmm. uh, Gamashi, all, you can move from there directly to North Medina. You have to go around in a certain way. There's no road that connects directly mm -hmm. from southern Accra exactly. to, to every, Medina. Everything was done haphazardly. So you have to join the one that is coming from Tema, yes. that is going to the other side, and then it will turn at some point, yes. and then it will head towards yes. 37 and, and head towards Medina. Yeah. And then the main, the, the usual practice is that you have a main road, and then you have several side roads that take you into the community. Yeah. So you look at, let's say, St. John's at Achimota to Kwabenya. Mm -hmm. There's only one major road that leads you there. But ideally, if we had planned well, there would be that major road, 
and then several side roads that take you into the but various But now that we are where we are, how are you going, how are we going to reverse Th this? That's what the Spatial Development Framework... So you're going to ask people to pull down their homes? There are certain areas, yes. For, listen. Uh, now and where do they go and live? It becomes political. It, it becomes political, but the, the, in fact, sometimes I think there are certain areas that may never have indoor plumbing, simply because areas where we should have pipes have been built upon. And so it would be but very impossible. Do, I mean, so so that the, the metropolitan and the district authorities have done a poor job. Very. And yes. even up till now, they're very, very uh, poor on that. In fact, the weakest... We, we all as a country don't take district assembly seriously, do we? Well, we are now moving towards electing them, and hopefully that will bring a certain degree of accountability yeah, yeah. Uh, than we've done so far, because now it's the president who appoints them and so forth and so on. Yeah. But we have to give them the framework, the tools and so forth and so forth uh, to work with. There was, uh, um, so that hopefully they will become the agents for development and MPs can concentrate on exactly. their work. Exactly. In fact, mm -hmm. that's, that, I like the term agents of development. That's what districts are supposed to do. Yeah. Development is supposed to be delivered at the local level by them. But they are so dysfunctional that they, be, they are almost irrelevant. Because they will be in charge of the spatial planning. Exactly. District based, district exactly. roads and that kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. We now it's have really their work. Ministry of Roads and Transport will have less to do yeah. or should have less to do. Mm -hmm. But where's well, the roads, money going to come from? Roads are, well, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, we now have the uh, LUSA thing, Land Use and Spatial Development Authority that has been set up. Oh, but in Ghana we have all, exactly. all, all of these things. Exactly. Now you asked a very happens. good question Nothing of happens. where the money is going to come from. For over 10 years, about 15 years now, again, if in the plan, we talked about one of our weaknesses in Ghana, which is lack of a sense of urgency mm -hmm. as a people. Mm -hmm. There are so many laws that should have been passed that haven't been passed for more than 10 years. And there's a, one for the Municipal Financing Authority Bill that would allow certain districts, certainly uh, AMA, you know AMA's economy is bigger than the economy of Gambia, for example, like twice as large and so forth and so. AMA, KMA, and all these, mm -hmm. they can raise the money themselves through yeah. bonds to mm -hmm. finance, but that law hasn't been passed. In 2009, I organized a workshop on that and produced a rule. 2009, and I personally, I have a copy here that I'll show you. I personally took copies to Parliament at the time they were supposed to be discussing it. Nothing has come of it 10 years ago. So we need to work on that. Now, talking about bonds, the, the, the bonds and what is it, King K Party or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's for the national government. But the, the municipalities also need to be primed. But they to can be able raise bonds upon what? Upon if, the if I buy the coupon, how, we need to what's the confidence that our AMA can pay me a billion? It, it, needs, to be, it needs to be structured. And it, there are so many factors that are going to that. First, we need to bring down inflation to make the in interest rates attractive. The central government needs to give some tax incentives. So let's say if you buy municipal bonds, you won't have to pay taxes on that and so forth. So there are ways of structuring that. I wish I had the report. I'll show you a, a copy mm. of it. Is, is the MPP being hypocritical when they go for three billion euro bond and it's oversubscribed uh, by what they say is seven times oversubscribed? <laughs> first time in the history of Africa, no, they tell no, us. No, no, it's no, not no. the first time? No, no, no. What does oversubscribe mean, by that, the way? That's the for, thing. For, they, for they, those they, who they bring who more money it. than. So you are asking for three billion. According to them, the, the, the people offered uh, uh, 20, 21 billion. 21 billion. The, here's the cash. The people though. who were offering the 21 billion, didn't they know that it's 3 billion we're looking it, for? It's a good question. You know yeah. what? Uh, in February uh, 21st this year, that's mm -hmm. almost a year mm -hmm. to when we raised our 3 billion. Okay. Egypt also raised 4 billion, and it, it was oversubscribed by 21 billion. Same 21 billion. 21 billion. Is it, is it a well, coincidence? Yeah, no, but our. Th uh, well, I'll come to that. But our 3 to 21 is higher than Egypt's 4 to 21. Precisely. So but that in terms of record, let me give we, you, we will be holding Let me give you some headlines. You wanted to make a point about February. Is that something happens in February? No. The, 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 that, that Egypt did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so Egypt raised theirs, and they claim that it was oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. And I, I want us to connect the dots. Because mm -hmm. my sense is that the people who promote these euro bonds yeah. are kind of creating this hype around that the oversubscription. oversubscription thing as a way of drumming up business for themselves. Because on so you're talking about the brokers? Of course. And not everyone in, involved in that community. Those who are going to get a 6% fees and, and exactly. all of that. Exactly. Uh, 13 September 2000, no, se September 11, 2014, when we raised $1 billion. It was over oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. It's in the news. 8th October 2015, $1 billion oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. 13 September 2016, $750 million oversubscribed. And then... Well, but it's the level of the oversubscription, seven times No, no, no. The, it doesn't matter. But even in 2008, the first bond with it was oversubscribed. 2007. Seven. 750. Yeah. yeah. 
the, the, the subscription thing, you see, for me, it's a hype. And we should be careful not to buy into the hype. And rather deal with the fundamental issues. And what are some how of the... How is it a hype? It's not verifiable? Is it a PR spin? That's what it is. Because how is it that it, it, both Ghana and Egypt have $21 billion of a subscription? But in terms of the real meaning for students of, it, of investment banking... What does oversubscription mean? That you, they come to the table with more than what you actually How does that occur? Take? Because we, we put a prospectus up yes. that we are looking for Precisely. $3 billion at this rate. Exactly. So when I'm going into the room, yes. I know that Ghana needs $3 billion. So yes. I'm, I'm Chase Manhattan, I'm HSBC, yes. I'm Barclays Bank. Yes. I said, okay, of the $3 billion, I will buy $500 million. Mm. Do I get to know what others are buying? Mm. I don't get to know, right? That's why I'm saying my point simply is that mm -hmm. oversubscription really means nothing ultimately. For me, it's hype. Well, it, it doesn't has, it mean confidence in the system. No. It should mean that. It, it doesn't. Listen, it means too many people wanted to buy the coupon. It doesn't. No, nobody was going to put up $20 billion for any country anywhere. It's just hype. Nobody was going to give $20 billion to any country anywhere. If you look, compare the Ghana 30-year uh, uh, bond uh, with that of Egypt, Egypt actually got a lower interest rate than we did. We were on seven and a half, isn't it? On 30 years. I forget the figures, but I yeah, compared I them just before yeah. I came in. But e Egypt got slightly lower than we did. But again, I'm not really interested in the hype. I've just shown, I was reading a report by the Bank of Ghana 2004, mm -hmm. where they also talked about what's social. So let's set aside the hype and let's look at the practical mm -hmm. implications of these things. Mm -hmm. And like so many other things, it violates one of the key principles of public finance, that you shouldn't use one-off sources of revenue to support your recurring expenditures. Say that again. One off source, this is a one off source of revenue. Mm -hmm. the, you, the Euro bond. Yeah. The uh, Coco syndicated loan. Mm -hmm. It's a one source of one off yeah. source yeah. of revenue. Yeah. Uh, divestiture proceeds, mm -hmm. they are one off source of revenues. Mm -hmm. The principle in public finance is that never use them for recurring expenditures because they create a false sense of security. And well, in this one, the government has explained that two billion of the of the three billion is going to use to retire old debts, mm -hmm. and one billion is going to use for budget that, financing. That is part yeah. of the problem. And I think you left out a third one. I think they say they were going to use part of it for infrastructure development. Let's hope mm -hmm. that it actually goes into infrastructure development because we've heard that in the past where there's, there's so much... But let's just oppose this to the, to the CD situation. Mm -hmm. Is it your record that whenever we raise a bond mm -hmm. and is oversubscribed, yes. that the CD appreciates it as it has done in this season? It, it doesn't even have to oversubscribe, uh, to be oversubscribed. Mm -hmm. I, I, again, I said that's the fluff. So okay. let's leave that one out. Okay, whenever we raise the a bond, does the yes, CD appreciate? There's a spike. There's a spike because it, it helps. But is it a spike as in percentage terms, as major as what we've seen over the last week? There's, there's the CD was, was inching 5.9. Yes. And now is some are quoting 4.9. Well, I haven't seen that. I heard 5. 5.1. Yes. The, Even that. But that's massive. That's massive. That's, that's why initially I told you that there are animals, uh, animalistic spirits or animal spirits where investors get spooked and they want some sort of reassurance. They've gotten that. Mm -hmm. Don't forget last year also, once the, the um, euro bonds came in, it boosted our international reserves. Yeah. But since we didn't have a year long, don't forget there's a big difference here. Whereas in the other countries that compared Ghana to Kenya, Kenya throughout the year there's a steady flow of foreign exchange from tourists. How from is it that Kenya don't have oil? Mm -hmm. They don't have cocoa. They don't have gold. Yes. They have horticulture. Yes. Their population is greater than ours. 74 how, million. How yeah. are they able to do better than us? Are they doing better than us in Much terms of better. the fundamentals? Oh, yes, yes, But yes. Why, is I just, why is this so? I just came, because the money, I just came back. Were we not better than them in Nkrumah's time? Uh, yes, we started ahead of them, but they have much longer a period of stability than we, we did. Okay, so it's the stability that makes the it difference. It counts, but also policies. I just came back from there mm -hmm. about... Because, like, you know, the other day we beat them at their crash post. <laughs> That's soccer. Yeah, well, we beat them. Well, they, they, we beat them. <laughs> yeah, but during their independence, we actually sent yeah. the Black Stars and defeated them, I think, 7-0, mm -hmm. which was even worse. Yes. So why are we beating them and they, you know... But they, they don't they, have gold, they don't have oil, yeah, they, they don't they have, have cocoa. They have better institutions. Really? I just came back from there. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was, I, I, I was, I was, my flight was the one before the one that crashed, actually. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, the, the Ethiopian airline. We are happy you're here. Oh, yes. I'm very, I'm very glad I'm here <laughs> because that, that flight was, the, that one arrived at 3 a.m. But I'm, I, I, I switched actually to Sunday. Okay. But my colleague went on Saturday. And he got in? Yeah, he, he got there at 3 a.m. Uh -huh. And then the crash was the next one, which was 6 a.m. In any okay. case, I went there on Sunday mm -hmm. and I stayed in the suite. And you were in Ethiopian Airlines? Yeah, Ethiopian, the same Ethiopian Airlines, the same route, Accra. You didn't Addis, feel like changing Nairobi. your flight? 
I was already in the airport on Sunday, actually, when I received the news that the plane had crashed the, the day before. And you still went to the I counter still, with your parents. I, I, I had no choice. You said your prayer <laughs> by the grace of and God. No, I said, well, there's, there's no chance that it's going to happen twice in a row. Okay. So let me just take that chance and go. And, and, and I went on back. Yes, but I are. learned something. Mm. that We met with investors who had very grim uh, view of Ghana. But in terms of personal observation, I stayed in a three-star hotel, mm -hmm. a suite, that cost $75 a night. A suite? Suite. That's reasonable. Three, very reasonable. Mm. Now, I come back to Ghana, outside of Accra, there's another very good three-star hotel. For a standard room, single occupancy, it's $140. Mm. So you see how we make ourselves non-competitive. That's well, but that's because perhaps we are not receiving, that hotel is not receiving the anum, a number that's of guests. That's outside of Accra. Yes. Now, inside not, a, in inside in Accra, Accra uh, that should be better. It, it, no, no, no. It's likely to be much higher. But there's really? a hotel. There's a hotel. Isn't there. it a demand and supply situation? It's that Accra a, would have a higher demand rate. And but so relative to supply, Across Accra should, board, talk should to be anyone. Cheaper. We are a high-cost destination for tourism across board. In Ghana? Yes. And that this is where the government needs to engage the hospitality industry and find out exactly what is driving the cost. There's a hotel yeah, here that electricity sells... electricity, maybe? So many factors, we need to identify them and bring them down. There's a hotel that sells small Voltec for 12 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Now, that same Voltec is sold at ShopRite for 80 pesos. Oh, at say that retail. again. That same Voltec... 80 pesos. 80 pesos. And they are on 12 Ghana cities. 12 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So these are some of the structural impediments... To everyone say, oh, we should uh, increase exports and other. You cannot increase exports when you have such structural issues to deal with. Interest rates, 26%. In places like India and so forth, it's 4%, 5%. So we have a whole area of issues to deal with. And then you keep telling, you, oh, you know, uh, the fundamentals are strong. Well, which of the fundamentals are you talking about? Is it the policy fundamentals? Well, that's Is what we've been told. Let's listen to, before we run out of time, let's listen to Ken Oforiata. Uh, the Minister of Finance and Economic Planning. Uh, the Honorable Ken Oforiata spoke to um, Bloomberg uh, after the Eurobond launch, and this is what he said. Let me first talk about the bond sale yesterday, the 3 billion euro bond sale. We were hearing it was oversubscribed by more than six times. Can you give us an update on how oversubscribed it was and how that sale went? Uh, well, thank you very much indeed for this morning. It's good to be here. Um, I think yesterday was um, overwhelming, not only for Ghana, but for Africa in terms of the story. Um, you know, today the IMF board sits um, for hopefully the successful conclusion um, of Ghana's program and therefore an exit. Um, and therefore the market in our mind has overwhelmingly endorsed um, the policies we've gone through the past two years and their comfort um, that go Going forward, the country um, is in a good position to do well. So essentially, we came out for $3 billion, um, and um, amazingly, in three tranches of mm -hmm. seven year, um, 12 year, and 31 year. Uh, and all of those were overwhelmingly oversubscribed, as, I, as you mentioned. At some point, $22 billion uh, ended up at 19.9, in which we closed with $3 billion. Minister, good morning. It's Manus in Dubai. Um, with that kind of good appetite, I'm bound to ask you, will you come back to the market in 2019? And, and maybe even more so, would you even consider or, or deny that you will go for 100 year bombs? What do you think? Well, I mean, I mean, it certainly gives one reason to pause. Um, you know, there's usually speculation um, that election years are years in which um, countries um, um, sort of bust their budgets. Um, um, right now, I, I think we are uh, comfortable uh, with what we have done. We understand the market sentiment. Uh, we usually have a mid-year review um, to see uh, how we are doing with the budget. And those are when, you know, we make decisions um, for that. As you know, um, we have um, some financial restructuring and that we have to do with the microfinance institutions and special deposit institutions such as the savings and loans. And that has to be catered for in the budget and, and we'll see how we finance those. So can I just briefly confirm then, is the possibility of a century bond off the table for good? Can you confirm that or not? 
I don't think anything is ever off the table for good um, because really uh, the issue is that the market has told us that they are comfortable of 31s um, uh, and um, we have some very long term um, um, restructuring things that we have to do in terms of um, um, infrastructure. Um, so we'll have to work with the market um, to see whether they are interested in a longer tenure ban mm -hmm. um, for us to do that. But it will be a unilateral decision sure. to be a decision that, that okay. makes sense for the market. And we don't need to call it century bond. It is, it's, uh, it's a, maybe it's a 50 year something if that is what the market calls for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's what the market can take. Let's talk to you about the currency. Nera and I, were, make, let's make sure that we've, uh, we've got the right pronunciation. The SETI, uh, I mean, there was a real collapse. Do you think when you look backwards, was the rate cut a mistake? Or do you expect more pressure to come to bear on the, on the currency? Or are we finding a level? You know, um, it, it cannot be a mistake. Our central bank um, has been quite clear about uh, protecting the domestic environment and therefore um, uh, the inflation targeting that we have done. And that always calls for a balance. It is true um, that um, the markets um, were strong outside, uh, which means that people may look to, to externalize. But actually the fundamentals, as a governor will let you know, have all always been very strong and we really call this a speculative bubble and and the issues that that um, came to bear uh, was one um, Ghana was leaving the IMF and there was a certain amount of cynicism or spookness uh, from that so that occurred um, and then of course a few um, bondholders um, wanted to externalize their dividends um, and all of that collapsed with the um, with the emerging market um, tightening yes. um, and that's really what occurred um, and as you can see um, as quickly as it came so quickly is, is it going? Yes, you mentioned the IMF. <laughs> now, you, since 2016, you've halved the budget deficit, you've brought debt down as well. Is Ghana now prepared to go it alone, or will you continue with some sort of IMF assistance, for example, the policy support instrument program? Well, what um, I think we really have proven over this period, um, the clarity of, um, of our President Akufuado's vision of a Ghana beyond aid. So the principle of going alone, being sovereign and independent is very clear. However, we've had a great relationship these two years with the fund. Um, and so we move back to Article 4. Uh, it's now a 12-month review in which they come in every six months. We've also established an economic policy coordinating committee in which they will sit in. So the, the sense of the IMF as a trusted advisor uh, is something that we'll go on with. Only there's no money at the end of the table, uh, but the rigor of reviews, etc., will continue. And, and I think that's a healthy relationship. So you heard, uh, welcome back. I was just looking at the messages on my phone. That's why you caught me doing. Sorry about that. It will not <laughs> happen again. We are wrapping up now. It's half an hour past 10 o'clock in the evening. So that's the finance minister. He made reference to the strength of the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. How did you understand what he was saying? That's why I said we, we talk about fundamentals without being clear as to which fundamentals. There are basically three areas. When we talk about we have policy fundamentals, which is what they're usually referring to. So. Mm -hmm. Inflation uh, is coming down. It's been trending down for a couple of years now. It reached 9% uh, in uh, uh, January of this year, which is the first time it's reached a single digit in many, many years, uh, since 2010 or uh, 2011, thereabout. Um, and, and I mean by single digit, I mean nine or less, not nine or above mm -hmm. or anything uh, like that. But those are the policy uh, um, fundamentals they talk about. I think he also mentioned the debt GDP ratio. And, and the last time I think I was here, I told you about some of the limitations in using these textbook indicators. But he said that the currency um, rise, that's the depreciation of the city, mm -hmm. which was alarming, was mm -hmm. a speculative bubble. Yes. And that quickly as it went up, quickly is it coming back That's down? why I said it's, it's a shock. But the underlying, don't forget, it's been declining. Mm -hmm. The underlying trends, suddenly the money is coming in. It will help to stabilize it. But the irony is that the multinationals in Ghana, for instance, will just as quickly turn around and 
repatriate some of these same dollars back out. So your prediction so is that the city will will, de will decline again? If the past is a any At 5.1 now, you think by August it will be gone? It, it will be because, again, the, we, we are demanding, we, we, we are importing things. The government will be paying people to go out there and spend without any production. And that's one reason, Talk by the way. Talk what do you have here? And uh, cameraman, please do a good job the, of this. Let's this, be able because to see. some of What's my this? friends. This is, this, I know this one. I know the lady who does this. Oh, okay, terrific. I, yeah. I, I, What's I her name it. again? Uh, I don't something. know her. Oh, you don't know but her. But these I know her. people, Stacy, Stacy. Okay, God Stacey. bless them. Yeah. Our salvation, really, the city's salvation. Mm -hmm. I told you about Kenya. In mm -hmm. Kenya, uh, uh, Paul, virtually, I would say 40, 50 percent of virtually everything they have in their supermarket mm -hmm. is produced locally. Milk, yeah. you name it. We, on the other hand, don't. But I, I, I've taken interest in these things because I've been buying them. This is what, when so. What's this? This your, what's the point of this? Of one this one is uh, to, uh, toasted coconut chips. Toasted coconut chips. Chips. Okay. Yes. This one I just bought actually on my way here. Baked milky chips. Mm -hmm. This is so below, well packaged. But some mm -hmm. of them actually need. Can we to get them a close-up shot, please? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's a toasted coconut chip by Stacy. Yes. Uh, whom I know. Uh, it's, an, it's called Snacks of Africa. Yes. Sweet and savory. Exactly. And the one in the middle there is what? Toffees? This one is called the the lease or something. The lease. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, is, and That's this what, is chips? just a sample. Yeah, it's chips of some kind. Okay. This is plantain chips. Okay. Our future. So and the, the big one is what? This one is wine produced in the Volta region. I see. But most people would think that it's actually imported. Red wine. Yeah, I yes. thought so. Yes. Very well packaged. It's, it's very well packaged. So all the, these are produced here? The, these are produced here. Okay. But this is where the government's focus on job creation should be. Not on peop putting people on government payroll. Because there's a, a, there's a capacity beyond which mm -hmm. government simply cannot employ people. Mm -hmm. But these people, once they have the support, the capacity to employ... But that's what Ghana Exam has been doing. But they, that's what I was telling you the last time I saw what they were doing. They were doing youth in vegetable farming. They clearly... Listen, our vice president just went to India to go and borrow 180 million US dollars from the Exim Bank of India yeah. so that India can do what? Export things to Ghana. Whoa. Meanwhile, India makes it virtually impossible for us to export things to India. They only want Ghana to export what? Raw materials. Mm -hmm. But when we want to export manufacturers, they then add tariffs to it. So okay. these are some, some of the So these people, government should find them. Get, I'm not saying that government should go and give them handouts. Mm -hmm. But certainly create, an, because they are operating at 26% interest rate. Compared yeah, to their difficult. competitors yeah, that's tough. who are getting 5% interest rate. They have to pay two years in advance. Ten years goodwill. And so mm -hmm. forth and so on. Yeah. This is where our salvation lies. If we want, and I mean, what I is Sobolo, by the way? Sobolo is is a local bring. You should know that. Come nah, on, I this, know it. No a, alcohol, a, a right? Bisap, uh, 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 you bisap, know, as ginger, yeah, yeah, and all that. And uh, they, I have to say that, as impressive as they are, some of them have technical deficiencies that we need to address. Like For in example, the labeling? yeah, in the labeling. The certain markets you cannot export to un unless you have nutritional information. Mm -hmm. But these things we can easily work with them on Ghana Standards Authority. Yeah, and yeah. It, that's fairly easy. Yeah. And this is where the employment for NAPCO, for example, we're going to be spending about $3 billion yeah. in three, three billion cities in three years. Mm -hmm. If we use that money to support these businesses across the country. And create more of such businesses. Man, we'll NAPCO is capped at 100,000. This state system, for instance, could be on Kenya Airways. Exactly. It could be on in, Ethiopian in the hotels, airlines. In my it could hotel. Be, it could be in every in hotel. hotel. Exactly. And it could be on British Airways. Ex not just that. You want to be walking in a supermarket in New York, mm -hmm. in Washington, yeah. and you see that there. Yeah. I've seen Kenyan bacon in our, uh, in our supermarkets yeah, here. Yeah. But we are not doing that. The Ghana Export Promotion Authority, from, for uh, as long as I've known them, mm -hmm. are more involved in scandal after scandal after scandal. They, are stuck, they, they focus mostly on non-traditional authority, yeah. uh, non-traditional non mm -hmm. exports, which is stuck between 2 billion and 2.5 billion. Meanwhile, the population is growing. Our demand for imports keeps growing. Meanwhile, the exports are not taking place. So if the government really wants to deal with the issue of the city, the issue of employment, mm -hmm. listen, most people think of SADA in terms of a confirm and trees and all that. That was the first two years. But the last two years of SADA, was simply unbelievable. They came up with a master plan that would have transformed the northern half of this country, not just the three northern regions, but the upper part, uh, Bronga half yeah, yeah. It would have transformed that to a point where... But poor, that document is still available. It's still available. But what, what, are, what has been done with that? 
it would have. I've heard people talk about that document. The, but it needs to be implemented mm. because they, we work with them. NDPC work with them closely. The, the ultimate uh, uh, projection was that within f uh, five to ten years, maximum twelve years, there would have been labor shortages in northern Ghana. So that people pe have to return there? No, not just people returning. Those from northern, uh, southern Ghana will finish school and get on a plane or train and go to northern Ghana. That's how potent the plan is. We put that aside and we are putting everybody on government payroll when we cannot support that. Mm. So we need to, and I remember lastly, when we, we were talking with President Kufo during the preparation of the, we went to visit him, and President Kufo kept saying that, listen, only the private sector can export. The government cannot export. Yeah. So there must be effort made to support the private sector. Let's give these people some props, uh, even though it's free. Mm -hmm. But then again, our That's salvation... True. But you know, I, I, uh, Ghana Exim, that's Tuesday market, mm -hmm. where they display all of these things... Uh, and they get people to come in and see them, that they exist, identify them. And these are people that they are supporting. You think is that is I something... Think they I just told you, India's mm -hmm. Exim Bank mm -hmm. has just made it possible for us to import $180 million worth of irrigation, whatever, for Ghana. Oh, so it's not even cash? No, 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 no. They're going to use that. You see, it's, it's, I don't want to call it a scam, mm -hmm. but that's the nature of what, what is known as tied aid. They give you the aid, but it's tied to things that you have to buy from them. And usually the prices are inflated anyway. So mm -hmm. something that costs $5, they'll give it to you at $20. Meanwhile, they tell you that the interest rate is only 1.7 and so forth and so on. I don't blame them. They are very strategic, the way they do things. Even here, we have multinationals that work very closely. And in the end, they all ship money out. So we have, for instance, KFC. Yeah. You go to KFC, what kinds of soft drinks do they sell? Coca-Cola. Co they are they both American sell, companies. They don't sell sobo though. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But at, if we are smart, we'll make sure that a certain proportion of shell space in all these places will sell locally produced goods. But you have KFC, which is an American company. You have Coca-Cola, which is an American company. At the end of every three months, they make their profits in CDs, but then they ship it out in dollars mm -hmm. to the U.S. How many Ghanaian companies ship profits from the U.S. to Ghana? None. In the absence of that, we are supposed to export. We don't. Look at Total uh, Petrol Station. Next to that, you always have what? Uh, Société Générale, ATM. They're both French companies. Every three months, they ship profits out. How much? So you see the fundamental weakness of the city and the fundamental weakness of our economy. And then the problem is aggravated by the dysfunctional nature of the Ghana Export Promotion Authority and then the Exim Bank. Ideally, ideally, the president, whoever he is, should be in charge of exports. The president of Ghana. Yes, and I say Should that be because chairman of, of the board of Exim. Yes, not just that, but and actually, the Ghana Export Promotion the, the, Center. The, the, I say that because you're, of you're what happened. That our crusade towards export is our salvation. Uh, precisely, I get you, that just, point. you just solved it. I get that. And point. in that, indeed, when I met, you know, before he was sworn in, I went to the president's house and briefed him mm -hmm. on the long-term plan, and we both agreed that without an aggressive growth in exports, his growth agenda is not going anywhere. And the Ghana Beyond Aid is not going anywhere? It's not going to go anywhere because you need to be. And I said that he should personally take over because of what happened in South Korea. Because we also, we studied all the miracle South economies. Korea talking about Lee Kuan Yew? No, not no, Lee no, Kuan no. Yew, Park Chong Hee. Yeah, Chong Hee, yeah, that's He South was Korea. in power for 18 years. And during those 18 years, every six months, he personally reviewed the export data. Every mm. six months. Mm. And the minister in charge was given just one chance, no, two. So you, make, you miss your target. You come to the meeting, you explain why you missed your target, and then tell him how you're going to address that. If you miss it a second time, you're gone. You don't even come, just disappear. They sack you as a minister. Oh, of course. We don't do that in Ghana. Exactly. Ministers don't get sacked because they miss their target. But that's They don't have targets. That, they just, they're just there. They, just, they will get paid anyway. Now you see we why. We have to have ministers having a target. And the president must be able, minister must know that I am sacked because I didn't meet my because target. Because the targets will then be objective. Yes. You move from ambassadors. Every single ambassador that must be given a target for market penetration abroad, especially for key markets, US, Europe, UK in particular, South Africa, all our ambassadors, you sit down with them, you work with NDPC, Minister of Finance, this is going to be your target over the next four years. For our penetration in that country? Yes. The Sobolo, we have something called Sobolo. So your commercial officer in Pretoria should be, rather than sitting in an air-conditioned office in Pretoria, he should be out there trying to make sure that we promote Sobolo. Of course, in Ghana, the political nonsense will get in. This person is NDC, this person is MPP. But ultimately, we need to brush that aside yeah. and give our ambassador. So an ambassador will be there when you are recalled. Why? Because you couldn't meet your target. 
That's how the world is run. That's how. That's where we should get to. Exactly. We must get there. But we sit here, you know, you know, our development partners say we are doing well and so forth. Meanwhile, all these things are sitting here. There's, there's no export market. They, they have to pay two years rent advance. When I was in Kenya and we mentioned that to a lady, she's a Kenyan based in Brussels. She almost fell off her chair. You people pay two years rent advance? I said, yes. That's how crazy we are. And then you go to a country, they pay 10 years goodwill. We have to do this at a town hall meeting, Dr. <laughs> Nimoy Thompson. We'll it's live crazy. in here. It's we'll crazy. definitely bring back this program. We'll show this episode again. Mm -hmm. I've been very impressed with your deep analysis of <laughs> the city situation and your demonstration with all of these items that, that you got. Thank but, you so but much. My suggestion to the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. maybe he, he wants to consider floating a kinky bond. Kinky bond, I say that half tongue in cheek, but also seriously, for agricultural development. You may want to consider that. What but does that not, mean? Uh, well, a bond, what would a coupon be selling? For, for locally, raised mm -hmm. locally, mm -hmm. for agricultural investments. So rather than going to India for money to come and do uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, irrigation and so forth and so on, we can raise those bonds solely for agricultural infrastructure. We call it a kinky bond. Kinky bond. Watch a bond. Watch a bond, whatever. So your suggestion is that Kenneth Rata must think about that. He Raising a watch a bond of 500 million. 500 million. And all the money is going into the development of yes. agriculture. And, and not just that. You see, in the U.S., they have different names for different bonds. They, they, have, they have something they call enterprise bond or revenue bond. Mm -hmm. That means a bond that pays for itself. Yeah. And before the investors uh, put money down, you have to convince them that this money, the $100 million we're giving you, is going for the production of this. Not this, not this. Or other. So you can do the kinky bond for agricultural infrastructure that pays for itself. So irrigation, the farmers will uh, subscribe to the irrigation and pay for it for uh, coastal communities. The but coastal essentially, we need to develop our local champions. That's, that's the only way out. Paul, in South Korea, again, I keep citing South Korea because in 1962, we were ahead of South Korea. Yeah. We had a higher per capita income mm. than South Korea. But they, had, they passed a law called illegal acquisition of wealth uh, law or decree. It was military at the time, mm -hmm. decree. And they gave them, the, the people, they simply they didn't pay their taxes, businessmen. So Park Chung, he gave them a choice. He said, you either go to jail or you invest in strategic areas of the South Korean economy. And that's how today we have Kia, mm -hmm. we have uh, um, all these major South Korean companies. Even the steel industry in South Korea, when they started it, the World Bank told them, no, no, you can't do that, that's beyond you. Otherwise, we won't give you aid. So Park Chung, he said, all right, take your aid. So he left the aid, flew to Japan, borrowed at commercial rate, and came back and developed the steel industry. So today, if you are driving Kia in Ghana, it's because Park Chung, he believed in himself and his people. He said, take your, keep your money. He went to uh, uh, Japan and borrowed at commercial rate. We need to believe in our champions and invest in them. But we keep going. We no. need not to be jealous of them. No, no, no. We don't We're, need to pull them down. Even I, I drive around Accra and I see <laughs> that all the businesses are being owned by non ghanaians Even these fancy buildings that are going up, yeah. uh, these high rises. Even our retail. I mean, my concern has been that we shouldn't, as a country, uh, give a business that depends on our lifestyle to a foreigner. Like our mobile phone lifestyle. I mean, Ghanaians talk on the mobile mm -hmm. phone, mm -hmm. and that's it's Ghanaian lifestyle that creates the revenue in the telco. Mm -hmm. But all of that goes away. All, all of that. It, it, for me, Ethiopia own their own telco. Yes, Ethiopia. That's why they've done the train. Exactly. They've done all that. We can have a mix. My problem is that they come here, but we are not out there. We had but at least we can take control of what we have, exactly. even if it's 40%. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, and, then, and then. Did I tell you the last time that the, again, uh, was it Ghana Telecom? Mm -hmm. When we saw Ghana Telecom. You know how they spelled Kumasi in that document? No, I don't know. C O O M A S S I E. In which document? The sale and purchase agreement for Ghana Telecom. I see. That means none of our people actually even read the agreement. They simply signed. And this is how we always fall short. That's why we're not even making any money in the oil industry. Because we sign these crappy agreements and we hardly get anything. We don't put our competence people forward. No. Because of politics. Not just politics, but venality. I mean, I, I tell you, there was once when I was, when I was in office traveling on the government delegation, there's a man in the plane there looking, acting a bit odd. He was wearing his winter coat and all that. I started talking to him. And guess what? This was a man who was supposed to be a member of the government delegation. He was somebody's pastor. Say that again. He was somebody's pastor. He was one of the members of the government delegation's pastor. <laughs> He, he said he was somebody's pastor. That's why he's on the plane. That's why he wasn't. And this happens a lot on government delegations. Pastor. So, 
people I mean you can I, I, I'm happy to go with my pastor I love traveling with my pastor if I, if I could thing. but I have to take care of it exactly shouldn't but be not on the on government, government delegation no, no, no. a lot of government and it's not a now he can come on the delegation but he shouldn't be paid for by no. government no government delegation is government delegation listen we you, I've raised that issue because you say we don't put our best forward yeah. because when we constitute these delegations so if you read in the papers that seven member delegation have led from Ghana mm -hmm. chances are five of them are not even government officials and only two of them, and two overworked, by the time they get to the conference, they are tired. Meanwhile, across the table from them, the U.S. is fielding 15 experts. Serious experts. Serious experts. And you present two people. The seven that remember that five of them just get off the plane and they disappear. Visa racketeering. It happens all over. So in the end... These are hard facts. I mean, it happens not just Ghana. But again, when I was in office, I remember there was a U.N. conference. I was there. Serious discussion at the U.N., a lady, not from Ghana, from one of the West African countries. Evidently, while we were having the conference, she went shopping. Mm -hmm. Comes in, sits in the UN conference for a while, and then she does a selfie. Within five minutes, she was gone. So now you see why Africa is You spent is too much crack. time looking at her, Dr. Thomas. You spent too much time because looking at her. Because I was wondering, because you know that you, you, have, you have the name played there. Yeah, yeah. And it was empty. Yeah. So finally she comes, because when I travel, I'm very much concerned about the deals that Africa is getting or not getting. Mm. General Africa, not just Ghana. Exactly. No, mm. no, not just Ghana, because mm. we are all ultimately related mm. in one way or another. So this lady then comes in, and she doesn't even seem to care. Meanwhile, she's collected her per diem, everything, and her government back home assumes that she's representing her government. Mm. And I raise this issue because of what she said, that we don't make the best deals. How the hell do you spell Kumasi the way it was spelled 250 years ago? It means nobody read the, uh, the document. I'll leave it here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Ghana will be great again. <laughs> I can assure Most you definitely. of that. And uh, viewers, we took a bit of your time, but I think it was an interesting discussion. And uh, we have enough uh, material then to show it again another time. Thanks for watching. Good night.